video, I'm going to talk about Power BI admin portal and where all the settings are stored uh, with regards to administration from a Power BI perspective. Now, in order to access administration portal for Power BI, you need to navigate to app.powerbi.com and then from there, you click on settings icon and then you can navigate to the admin portal or use this as a direct link. Now, what are the options which you can configure as one well as tenant settings, usage metrics, user management, audit logs, domains, workloads, capacity settings, uh, embed codes for the published uh, reports uh, in the internet domain, org visuals, Azure connections, workspaces, custom branding, protection metrics, fabric identities, featured content, uh, and then help and support. Now, this is how the basically the admin portal looks like. So let me give you a demonstration on uh, the settings. Okay, so in order to access Power BI, you can navigate to app.powerbi.com and then from there, it will authenticate you. And once you authenticate it, you will be logged into the Microsoft Fabric. Now, within this Microsoft Fabric, here you will see a lot of items on the left-hand side and you can navigate to your workspace from here. So I have so many workspace which has created uh, and also I can navigate to various reports, paginated reports, dashboards, and all other components which I've recently used. Now, from a settings perspective, if I click on settings over here, then I have option to see the developer settings, notification, general, etc. But I'm more interested in governance and insights, which is part of admin portal. So let's click on admin portal. And then this is the admin portal. So admin portal consists of various settings, which you can see over here. Now, the admin portal settings are segregated based on various component as i'm an admin i can see everything but then if you are a user you will not be able to see many of the components over here okay so coming back to tenant settings so if i click on tenant setting all the items related to tenant will be stored over here so you can do various things you can also search from here so if i want to search anything related to say graph then it will show me the information over here, right? So I can, if you know some settings and if you are unable to navigate to that settings, make, make sure that you use the filter by keyword search over here. Okay, what are the options you get? Data activator. So if you want to enable it for the entire organization, then uh, you need to turn on the switch enabled. Now, all the settings or most of the settings will follow this pattern, okay? so how the option works is basically first it says you enable it okay you need to enable that feature so whatever feature is listed you need to enable or disable it from here and then you specify whether you want to do it for the all organization or some specific security group or accept specific security group so a lot of options available but most of the settings if you see it follows that same pattern first you need to turn on the switch and then based on that you give it to all you give it to specific or you says just say that except for that give it for all okay now did this is data activator similarly users can create fabric items now as you see over here again it's on that same term right and also you have an option to capacity admins can enable or disable now i can turn this off i can turn this on i can specify security group so specific security group so i have different security group created if i just have sec i can see that there are like five or six different security groups which are created if you do not have one you will not be able to see anything so that means a security group can be used to control the component level feature within microsoft fabric Okay, so if I say I want to give this to security three only, or maybe I'll just say just give it to security three and security zero zero two, then I can do that. Or maybe I'll just say I want to give this feature, users can create fabric item to security three and two, or I'll say don't give it to security three and two. Okay, or accept security group, and I'll say give it to uh, accept specific security group and then specify at least one security group. So I'll just say security, say seg group as 001. So if you see the setting, it says apply to the entire organization or apply to specific security group and accept specific security group. And then you say, I want to give this access to security group, seg group as 001, yes. 
and I do not want it to be given to sec 3 and sec 002. So this is how it gets interpreted. Okay, so these are the ways through which you can uh, configure the settings. Okay, now what all things you can configure? Data activator, user can create fabric item, user can create ADF mount item, sustainability solutions. Uh, so these are the different solutions which are available as a part of Power BI, sustainability solution, retail data solution, healthcare data solutions. Uh, and then we have something called a user can create and use data workflows. Okay, this is also an important setting. So if you have a data workflows, you can uh, um, enable or disable over here. Uh, API for graph query language, uh, database mirroring, product feedback. So I'm not going to go into the detail, but then I'm just sh showing you so that you are aware that these settings reside somewhere in the admin center. Now, help and support setting, publish, get help information. Now users in the organization can go to internal help and support resources from Power BI help menu. So if you want to enable that get help information, you can do that. Uh, user can try fabric paid feature. So you can turn that on, receive email notification for service outages. So uh, here uh, you can enable if there is uh, any service outage or incident notification if you want. Show a custom message before publishing report. So you can enable that. It says you can just say this is org ABC. Make sure no data is leaked outside the org. Okay. And I'll just say Girish INC. So this is just if I want to put some notice before a user publish a report, uh, then you can put that disclaimer over there. Okay. So I'm just applying this. And remember, if you any change you make, it says ten and certain certain settings changes will be applied within the next fifteen minutes. Now domain management settings allow tenant and domain admin to override workspace assignment. From a workspace, you have different workspace setting, creation, defining the retention period, using semantic model, blocking users from reassigning personal workspace. And from an information protection perspective, you can uh, configure, allow users to apply sensitivity labels, apply labels from data sources, automatically apply sensitivity labels, allow workspace admin to overwrite uh, the sensitivity labels, which I applied restrict content with protected labels and increase the number of users who can edit and publish encrypted PVI file. Uh, from an export sharing perspective, there are numerous options like one is publish to web, copy and paste visual, export to Excel, export to CSV, downloading the report. Uh, guest users can browse and access fabric content. Users can accept uh, external data shares, sectional data sharing. Guest users can access fabric. Users can invite guest users. So all the settings related to export and sharing is stored over here. You can even export your work item as an MHTML, Word doc, XML doc, image files, print dashboard report. You can certify your data. So, so if you click on certification, it says choose whether people in your org can certify items like app reports or data marks. So there is a certification workflow basically, uh, which you can create within your organization to authenticate uh, the credibility of the, uh, the artifact. Uh, you can endorse master data. Uh, you can set up email subscription, featured content, uh, install uh, uh, Power BI app for Teams automatically or enable the Teams integration configure the add-ins, uh, allow direct query connections, uh, and then allow specific users to turn on external data sharing. So these are some of the important things which you need to understand that these settings exist. So in terms of data sharing, data export, uh, in terms of access, in terms of discovery, so from a discover content, uh, make certified content discoverable, make promoted content discoverable. So those all things can be configured. Uh, then we have app settings, uh, integration settings. So all these things are available as a part of admin portal. So I'm not going to go through each and everything, but there is a huge comprehensive list from a Power BI visuals, R and Python visual settings, audit and usage setting, dashboard setting, dev settings, admin API settings. So this is also an important uh, uh, setting area through which you can configure the service principle about reading an admin API or enhancing the admin API response with the detailed metadata. Template app settings. So if you are a independent provider which uh, publish various template apps, so you can make use of this feature set. Publish template apps, install template apps, install template apps not listed in app source. And there are numerous other options related to metrics, user experience, experiments, 
uh, sharing data set with Microsoft 365 services, uh, insight setting, data math settings, data model settings, scale out settings, and then Git integration. So if you want to connect your repository to a uh, third party or like a uh, Microsoft Azure DevOps uh, repository, then you can do that. Uh, and then there are a couple of settings related to Copilot and Azure OpenAI services. Right. Going back to usage metrics. Now, usage metrics, this page will be eventually removed. Uh, and then this for that, you need to go into op, uh, admin monitoring workspace. So admin monitoring workspace, I'm going to cover that in a separate video. It's a separate workspace to basically monitor uh, your uh, administration related uh, signals uh, in the Power BI users if you click on users it will navigate you to microsoft 365 admin center so from there you can navigate to the admin center and then configure the user so if you want to create a user assign a license to a user or uh, grant some access to power bi services you can do that from m365 admin center premium per user so if you uh, so this is basically related to licensing so this is premium per user uh, if you have the premium per user license assigned, then you can configure the page refresh, you can configure the change detection measure, and you can uh, configure the XMLA endpoints over here. Uh, audit log perspective, again, it will take you to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, but this will take you to the compliance site, which will eventually take you to the purview site uh, to uh, basically configure the audit log uh, related to Power BI. So you can configure various whole bunch of settings related to uh, Power BI. So you can track who created the workspace, who created the report, how it was edited and who edited it. So those kind of information will be uh, stored as a part of audit logs. Domains, you can create a new domain. So create domains that match your aux key business segment. So I can create my own domains. I can assign admin to a domain. I can add a subdomain. I can attach domain to a security group. So I'm going to cover this in a separate video, but then there's a possibility that depending on your business segments, you can create a domain. Workloads. Now, uh, here also you can create a workload. I'm going to cover that in a separate section. Capacity settings, you can configure the capacity, you can configure the refresh summary, uh, depending on the license, Power BI Premium, Embedded, Trial of Fabric Capacity, it will list down all the settings, and then you can configure the refresh. Embed code, you can view the embed code that have been created by your organization. So take, for example, if the user has configured uh, the published to web uh, report, uh, then here you will see all the embed codes related options. So you can view on web, you can delete, you can get the code. Uh, organization visual, so there are many organization visual which you can configure and make available to your end users. So I've configured one of the visual, so you can configure various visual from a file or from an app source. And then from that point onwards, the organization visuals will be available to the end users. So uh, in Power BI uh, desktop, you will be able to see that this visual is available now there are some out of the box visual which are available but then once you make the organization visual available then those will be shown as a part of uh, the uh, visualization pane okay coming back here azure connection so connect to azure resource we have tenant level storage you can connect to azure we can connect to an azure data lake gen to storage account uh, we can have a workspace level storage permissions to allow workspace admin to connect to their own storage account. And we can have workspace level analytics permission configured, uh, which would basically allow you to configure the activity logging in. Workspaces, these are the list of workspaces which are available as a part of uh, uh, my tenant because I have created uh, some of the workspace, some of the workspace already available. That is my personal workspace. But as you see over here, there are different types of workspace, personal group workspace, admin workspace, etc. And then depending on what type of workspace it is, you can configure various settings. You can also export the workspace. You can reassign the workspace and you can do a whole bunch of things with regards to workspace. You can also see what kind of reservations or the capacity uh, is available per the SKU. Uh, so this workspace, PP workspace is premium per user reserved, PP3. Uh, and then uh, we have this custom branding. So custom branding uh, can be used uh, for uh, your Power BI uh, interface. So as you see over here, I made this uh, green color and I've added this icon. This is icon is coming from uh, here, from the logo. 
and then once you go into the power bi interface you will see this cover image so cover image so if i go to the home of the power bi as you see over here this is a cover image which i can see so these all things are configured using the power bi admin center protection metrics you can turn on the information protection in the tenant you can open the defender for cloud apps portal to have those high level sensitivity labels configured uh, and this makes use of microsoft purview information protection fabric identities you can have various identities listed over here again this is a part of uh, azure uh, service principle uh, and then once you create that service principle it will be listed as a part of fabric identities uh, featured content if you have any reports dashboard and apps that have been highlighted in the feature section that will be listed over here uh, help and support if you want to raise a ticket uh, to the service desk then you can uh, use help and support from here also if there are any incidents happening in the production environment that will be listed over here now as you see over here in help and support i can see a whole bunch of uh, service request which has been raised earlier uh, is listed over here now this is uh, the service request which i have created so if i click on new support request uh, it will take you through that experience of uh, problem solutions and support uh, and then it will try suggesting you uh, an option but then if you are not satisfied with the options provided by microsoft you can raise a support ticket so that's it folks this is all you can do with admin portal in tenant settings remember tenant setting is the most comprehensive one it has most of the settings for required for your tenant to configure uh, it's very impossible to cover in one complete session with all the settings but uh, make sure that uh, if you encounter uh, any settings which you need to do in power bi admin center if it is not available definitely it's going to be there in the tenant settings and if you are not able to find that then click on filter by keyword search and then you will be able to find so if you want to search related to anything related to git you can just type in git and then all the settings related to git will appear over here so that's it folks this is how you basically use power bi admin portal thanks for watching